and the host of Israel are by God round the walls of Jericho so Trusting in the Lord, oh yes, they felt the conqueror's tread. By faith, they saw the victory.
my death's river cold and dark, I will one day stand, trusting in the Lord. Yes. I will not fear, nor dread. No fear or dread. By faith I see that victory. All right, welcome to the Hope in the Lord broadcast. Come to anyone that watches on Facebook Live every Sunday night at 8 p.m. We continue our series of sermons on Jesus in the Word of God. We'll be in John chapter 8 tonight. So go ahead and get your Bible out or pull it up on your phone. It'll be John chapter 8, verse 12. And uh, we'll get to it, the sermon, in just a few minutes. Uh, we, in introductory comments, you know, we finished our uh, daily principles for an effective prayer life about two weeks ago, and then we started a new subject, uh, how to have career success, and uh, so we'll be doing that for a while. I want to give you a few principles quickly, and then we'll go to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer corporately. All of you out there, let's pray together for the blessings of the service tonight, right here live. Father, the sweet Holy Ghost has already been felt as Jesus was lifted up by the singing. We pray that, Lord, that you'll bless every family and person represented and save the sinner nearest to hell as we lift up Jesus to save the world. Reclaim all those who used to serve you and get them in a local church somewhere serving God. And also, last of all, we pray for all of us that are saved by your amazing grace, washed in your divine blood. Uh, we pray as we head toward that pearly white city that you'll give us all we need to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're talking about mentors. It's the importance of mentors. And then now we're talking about the gift of negotiating. The gift of negotiating. And as I said, uh, I believe this morning, that most uh, people that are successful in their careers or in their financial world, before they make any purchasing decision, they always get or have something work done for them. They get five quotes before they make their decision. Also, we were discussing uh, the importance of uh, having a right attitude when you negotiate with people. There's two parties in a negotiation and the goal is is for both parties to be satisfied with whatever the outcome uh, is so remember that in terms of negotiating um, also to give you a few uh, principles here an uncommon enemy will require uncommon wisdom and we know that if we lack wisdom all we have to do is ask of the Lord all right, and he'll give us wisdom. And then what you say is not as important as what others remember. <laughs> so a couple principles to think about uh, as we go forward to till tomorrow and tonight. Now, if you have a prayer request or a praise report, like my wife has on her cell phone when you call her, you know the drill <laughs> if you've been following the Word from the Word broadcast or the Hope in the Lord broadcast, you know we take prayer requests seriously here. We believe in the power of prayer. It is the hour of power. And when, so we take uh, those requests and we hit, daily we have prayer requests coming in from different people. And uh, keep us up to date on prayer answers and also praise reports. We need uh, to praise the Lord for uh, how good he's been to us. Amen. He's been better to me than I deserve. All right, let's get right into the message. Are you excited about the broadcast tonight? I um, hope your phone's doing better there, Pam. And, uh, so if you have, we, uh, we had another miraculous offering come in this morning for us, uh, for the outreach, my wife and I. So you can't outgive the Lord. And what was so funny, to give you the example of how important it is to do what God tells you to do uh, in terms of finances, 
I, uh, I always give a little bit more than my tithe. I mean, you know, I would love to be able to before I pass away. And I know this is, I know one pastor in California that him and his wife, they pastor one of the largest Baptist churches in the world. They started with just him and her and they moved out there and started the church and now it's one of the largest Southern Baptist churches in the world. He gives 90% of his income, him and his wife, every week to God. They started at 10% and over the years, now they've worked all the way up to 90%. So, I mean, I'm not, we're not even touching the hem of what God can do. Uh, but it takes faith. Well, so like today, uh, I, I probably, the Lord told me to give a certain amount, you know. And so as soon as I gave that l certain amount of, above the tithe, we had a message come in from one of the state, southern states of the United States, one of our supporters and viewers, and uh, they sent uh, an offering uh, that was way more than I was expecting. <laughs> you know, but it, hey, you know, it's the Lord. The Lord honors when you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. But if you sow, you know, sow a lot, you reap a lot. So I'm learning about the uh, about the giving to the Lord. After all these years, I'm not even touching the hem of what God can do in my own little personal world. But I'm going to find out, Amen. Because this year, if you remember, as we began our our uh, call it what you want online services or whatever. Uh, we said one of our goals was to learn to listen to the voice of the Spirit better. And so I hope that that's one of your goals. All right, let's look at it. John chapter 8. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the light of the universe. He's also the light of all of heaven. The Bible says there's no need of the sun because Jesus is the light of the city. Think about that. He is so powerful that he is the light of the universe. Hallelujah, somebody. John chapter 8, you know, that the woman was taken in adultery. They wanted her stone. Jesus wrote down in the sand. Nobody knows what he wrote. Uh, all the accusers left. He forgave the woman, sent her on her way saved, and on her way to heaven serving Jesus. And in the midst of all of that, in John chapter 8, I want to read this verse to you. And this is powerful, what I'm about to read out of the Word of God. The Bible says, Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He <laughs> said, Amen. He was telling them, I'm God Almighty in the flesh. And that's who he was and still is. So we want to look at Jesus Christ as the light of the world for a few minutes. And then we'll go into prayer requests. And we hope that you're learning a lot about the Lord by watching our little small broadcast. I'm, I'm excited that the Lord has given me a place to do something for him after pastoring all those years. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful that people watch our broadcast i hope the lord will connect us with more people in the future uh, because every person represents a soul and that soul is going to spend eternity somewhere and we want them if they're watching our broadcast for jesus we want them to go to heaven and not hell amen so jesus the light of the world he's a pure sinless light jesus has never sinned he's completely undefiled uh He's the sinless son of God. He's not only the pure light. Think about that. Pure light. No defects. No defects in Jesus. Completely pure. He's also constant light. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus will never change. He's eternal. Not only that, he's the source of all light. The source, of, like I said, he's the source of light in heaven. He's the source of the light throughout the universe. Light travels. Think about this. God who created physical light. Physical light travels at 186,000 miles an hour. Jesus is faster than that. 
You remember when the disciples were in a storm and he calmed the sea and walked on the water and entered the ship? The Bible said as soon as he entered the ship, they were three and a half miles out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. The Bible says as soon as they, that he entered the ship, the ship was immediately at land. You're talking about supersonic, supersonic boat. That's how fast they moved to the land like that. Jesus is, is the light of the world. He's the light of eternity. And he's also Jesus, and I'm trying to read my, my notes, is uh, how's the sound out there? The sound, I've got this new mic my, that was purchased for the computer system. My wife uh, got it all worked for us. Thank God for her. And uh, how is it out there? Uh, does it sound pretty good? Did were you able to hear the music better? Are you able to hear hear me better? Hear me better? Uh, somebody let me know uh, t uh, tonight. Uh, and uh, a lot of prayer requests are being put on the board. We'll get to all the prayer requests and praise praise reports in a minute. But check this out: Jesus is the vital light. There is no life without Jesus. We didn't start living until we got saved. Somebody ought to say amen right there in the comment section. We didn't start living till we, and he gave us life. He breathed into us and we became a living soul. We're only here because Jesus put us here. We owe everything to him, everything. And, you know, people say, well, most of the world, it doesn't matter what most of the world uh, thinks about what we're doing. We're saved. We ought to give him the glory. If they want to get in on it, they can. If they don't want to get on it, in on Jesus, they don't want to get saved. That's their choice. But we're saved, and we ought to give him the glory. We ought to give him the praise for putting us here, for giving us life and eternal life and abundant life. And so light, his light, is the tool of discovery. His light is the tool that he has given in our souls, his light, to direct our steps. One preacher said, yes, he directs our steps, but don't trip over your feet as you follow him. And it's delivering light. The Apostle Paul said when people get saved, they are delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of, of Jesus, the kingdom of light. And no doubt the Apostle Paul was radically saved by Jesus. We see here that Jesus is the real light of the world. He's the revealing light. He reveals our sins. He reveals our steps. And the only reason we got saved was he revealed the cross to us and what he did for us at the cross and his resurrection from the dead. He revealed to us how to be saved. The faith that we got saved with, he gave us that faith. Ephesians chapter 2. And he's also uh, the required light. Uh, so if we don't have the light of the Lord, we stumble around in heartache and heresies and will ultimately lead right into the pit of hell for eternity, the lake of fire. Thank God for the light of the Lord. Now, let me give you three quick points and I'll be done. And we'll get into prayer and praise requests as we continue these series of sermons on Jesus and the Word of God. Number one, I want to read these verses to you. I'll turn my Bible. You see my Bible over here. In Luke chapter 18, let's turn over there real quick. Luke 18, verse 42. And I hope that's it. It's probably, yes. Jesus healed a blind beggar, and he said, Jesus said unto him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. And that's the only way you can get saved, is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Only in him can you be saved. He's the only Savior. There is no other way to heaven but Jesus. And we see here that Jesus is the light for those in darkness. That's point number one. Those in darkness. See, light throughout the Old Testament, God's light, played a prominent, important part in God's nation, Israel's experiences. The light of the Lord was the, the, the sign of, and the real presence, abiding presence of the Lord to the nation of Israel. When they came out of Egypt, you remember they headed to the promised land for 40 years. They had to wander in the wilderness. But during that 40 years, God was with them by a cloud by day and a flame, a pillar of fire by night. 
that light of that fire and that cloud let the people of God know. God was letting them know, I'm with, it, with you. You think of Gideon when God took his armies all the way down to 300 in that battle in which God gave him the victory over the huge Midianite nation in the book of Judges. The lamps and the pitchers was a signal when they broke it to shine forth the light uh, and, and represented the presence of God among the people of Gideon and his army and to help them defeat the enemies of God's people and God. We think of two types in the Bible. Here in this Luke chapter 18, Jesus gave sight to someone who was in darkness physically. He uh, healed uh, many people of blindness, Jesus did. Uh, but when we get saved, like the two the, uh, disciples on the road of Emmaus, he opens up our eyes to spiritual understanding and gives us greater revelation through the Holy Ghost. And so we see that Jesus is the light of the world. He's the light for those that are in darkness. Number two, in John chapter 8, which we read verse 12, if you were to read verses 1 through 12, uh, after all the uh, them bringing the woman, but remember it takes two to commit adultery. I always wondered if one of those Pharisees was the one that was uh, having relations with her. Uh, but after Jesus confronted the religious leaders, told them he was about sin, cast the first stone, and all of them uh, didn't throw their stones and walked away, and Jesus forgave the woman, saved her soul, and all of that. Uh, we see here that Jesus in this is showing us that he is light for those in delusion. The Pharisees and the religious leaders were in total disarray and delusion. They were being misled by the devil. And ultimately, most of them died and went to hell. Now, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arbathemia, uh, they got saved. But a lot of the Pharisees that had Jesus killed um, are in hell right now. They died and went to hell under the delusion of the devil. And uh, so we see here, Jesus is teaching, and this woman, her life was totally transformed uh, by the power of God, by the power of Jesus Christ. Uh, the transformation of character, someone being saved by the grace of God, being born again, is, the, uh, is greater than a physical healing. Someone getting saved is greater than a physical healing because you can be healed of the Lord and still die and go to hell if you're not saved. The greatest miracle is someone who gets born again, who gets saved. So there's a lot of folks that have excellent physical vision, but they have no vision of eternal things. They are in darkness. They're lost. Uh, so uh, then, but there's other people that are uh, are blind physically as I speak tonight, that are saved, and they see more than folks that have real physical sight. They have spiritual sight through the Holy Ghost. So he is a light for those that are in delusion. And then last of all, let's look at 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Listen to what the Word of God says. I'm going to start in verse 12. Seeing them that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. I like to just be plain in what I preach and teach, and I like preachers just to tell it like it is, uh, that even a child can understand it. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. Listen to the Word of God. For until this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the Old Testament, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there 
is liberty. So we see here, not only is Jesus the light of the world, the light for those that are in darkness, he is the light for those in delusion. But number three, he is the light for those in danger. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote 13 books of the New Testament of the Holy Ghost inspiration. The Apostle Paul uh, was commissioned to be uh, the Apostle to the Gentiles. But yet at the same time, he never forgot the plight of his Jew. He was a Jewish person. He was born a Jew. And his first ministry was to the Jewish people. And uh, he even said one time, and I th think about the love he had for his Jewish brothers and sisters. He even said one time in the word of God, take my name out of heaven. If that means the whole, all the Jewish people will be saved and turn to Jesus before it's everlasting too late. That's when you really love some people and love somebody. So he would always preach in their synagogues, even in his missionary journeys in the New Testament. And most of the time when he preached to the Jewish people, they persecuted him. Much of his persecution and suffering came because of Jewish people, his own people. Uh, so, but yet he still had a desire to carry the light of Jesus Christ, even in the midst of what all the hatred they had for him. Uh, because, see, prejudices uh, warp the mind, even to the point sometimes that God can't help some people. And God turns them over to a reprobate mind. Once you've been turned over by the Lord to a reprobate mind, you can never be saved. And that's why it's so important if the Lord is dealing with you or watching this broadcast or, or whatever, and you're hearing the gospel somewhere, don't say no. Because if you say he only he 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 only really promises to come by you once, <laughs> he comes back more than once. You're fortunate, and uh, we all are fortunate. But if he says it's over, you can never be saved. And that's that's uh, in other words, you sent away your day of grace, and so we need to be careful uh, not to. Keep telling no to the Lord till he can't save us at all. So we see here that Jesus is the light of the world. He's still that bright and shining light. He's still that seeking light, seeking to save the lost. He's still that saving light. And uh, Christ, the light of the world, still dispels and divides and directs and draws like a magnet those who are in darkness looking for the light. So I hope tonight that you enjoyed this sermon on uh, Jesus, the light of the world. And uh, of course, now next Sunday night, we'll be, if the Lord tarries, if I live, if he lets me live or the rapture don't come, uh, we'll be preaching again at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the Hope in the Lord broadcast. Now, this broadcast will be put on my uh, on my YouTube channel and we're trying to get folks watching that subscribing to it so let folks know that I'm on YouTube all I have to do is type Clay Cordell into the search engine all right let's uh, go ahead and take some prayer requests and praise reports hope that you enjoyed that message tonight let me get some medicine here real quick hang on one second folks So, praise the Lord. I start to can't, these allergies, I can't breathe sometimes. Okay. Let's see if we have, how many prayer requests I have tonight. Uh, let's see, uh, if you don't comment, I don't know you're there. Let's see, my wife tonight, hey man, Brother Eric, South Carolina. Brother Mark, I'll send you the scriptures later for tomorrow morning's broadcast. Uh, uh, Brother Mark, Virginia. Sister Pam, state of North Carolina. Uh, praise God, we finally got some rain, so she's praising the Lord uh, for rain in North Carolina. We needed it bad. Uh... Joe, preach, uh, Brother Joe White, good to have you tonight. 
Hope everything's well. Sister Pam says it's breaking up, but I think it's my phone. I'm surprised it's even playing at all. Well, we're glad it is playing. Sister Tammy Todd, state of Georgia. Good to have you tonight. Sister Pam says, please continue to pray for my mom and Mr. Eddie and my family. So let's move this over here. Uh, so we've already prayed for your mother today, but we'll pray for her again, Pam. I got her in the prayer book here. Also pray for Pam's family and also for Eddie. I think he's in the hospital still for healing in the name of Jesus. Now, if you would like to be anointed for anybody tonight, put it oil in the comment section. Uh, Pam Strickland, as long as I don't comment, it is working. Okay, so don't comment. <laughs> I got a two-edged sword there, huh? Brother Eric says, pray for the families of uh, uh, Mark Eaton. Uh, 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 Eaton, is that a basketball player? B.J. Thomas is a singer. I believe he passed away. And Gavin McLeod. Okay. Oh, they all, they passed away yesterday. All right. We pray for God's mercies and comfort on this, all these families. Um, Pam says, hallelujah. Let me go back up here. I'm putting a check on all these to make sure, uh, you know, let folks know that I see their comments. Uh, brother Eric, we just went through the prayer request there for the three men that passed away. Uh, Pam says, hallelujah. Brother Eric says it sounds great. Sister Tammy says, amen, great. Chris White, good to see you tonight. Hope your wife and all your family is doing well. And your ribs are doing better. I know they're doing better. I hope they're continuing to heal. Sister Pam says, amen. My wife says it sounds great. Brother Joe White says, amen. My wife's down somewhere in the house shouting. She said, amen, hallelujah. I thought that would get her to laugh, but she must be doing something. Uh, Pam says, me too. Sister Bobby. No, that's not Sister Bobby. That's Bobby Batodo Jr. Where are you from, uh, Bobby? Uh, let us know where you're watching from. All right. Chris White says, amen. I love the fellowship. Uh, please pray for my son Christopher and his wife. Christopher and his wife. Okay, so Chris, Christopher, and his wife. We pray in Jesus' name. Whatever they need, whether it be spiritual, emotional, healing, physically, provision, jobs, whatever, we pray for them. Amen. All right. Oil for Mom and Mr. Eddie. I will right, we'll anoint for them. Anybody else have any more comments or praise reports? Uh, the mic, believe it or not, the stand goes all the way down. So I was hoping it wasn't up here, which I don't have no problem, but it makes it better. But it's right down there. And so everything's working here on, on my state-of-the-art studio in my kitchen. And so let us know where you're watching from. We keep a record of those pins of what states and what countries people watch this broadcast from. Uh, let me tell you the backdrop of this sermon tonight. What's uh, how it shows you how the Lord. I'm sitting in church. Of course, all of you know I work on Saturday night all night. Then I get off. I do my early morning broadcast, and then I stay up, and I'm dead tired. Give out because my job is not only mentally but it's physically, and uh, so I make it through the service the best I can, um, and. And uh, my wife said something. I can't hurt something. But um, I'm sitting in the pew. And the children are doing their raising. They raise money all year for presents or something. For Christmas or something. And um, the Holy Ghost quoted what Jesus said. I'm the light of the world. And I looked it up while the children were marching around or receiving the offerings from the people or whatever. And um, 
the Lord spoke to me and said, that's what you're speaking on tonight. Now, see, I'm down here in South Carolina, and he's up in heaven, and the Holy Ghost in my heart. See, that's how God works. And so that message tonight you just heard, and then he led me straight to the outline and to the sources of other preachers who were generous enough to put their outlines out here for other preachers to use. They don't have to, but they do, because they're about the kingdom of Jesus, not their little world and their denomination. And um, I'm non-denominational. I was free will Baptist. I go to a free will Baptist church, but let me tell you something. Non-denominational. And um, I'm for the kingdom. I'm for the kingdom of Jesus. I'm for people getting saved and going to a Bible preaching church. And uh, that's what we do here. We're just the Bible. We're all about Jesus. And uh, so that's what you're looking for. That's what I'm here. That's what I do uh, for him. Uh, but so I preach the sermon, what the Lord told me to preach. So I know he's going to use it. And whoever watches this and you watching, uh, he will bless you because I bragged on him. And that's what it's all about. You make much of Jesus, he'll make much of you. All right, let's see. Glory, hallelujah, Pam says. <laughs> all right, I've got the oil out. Anybody else? Continue to pray for people that have, like these three individuals uh, that passed away. Remember their families. Uh, hopefully, everyone that's passing away saved and washed in the blood. Uh like one great preacher said, only God and that person knows if they're truly saved or not, but we hope they're saved. Um, and so continue to pray. With, you know, death is everywhere. Life is everywhere. It's just part of it. Uh, so we we need to pray for folks that God help them. Like Because all of us, if the Lord tarries, will have to bury loved ones. It's just part of the cycle of God's creation. Uh, death wasn't supposed to be part of it, but our sin brought death into the world. It's, we can't blame God for the mess the world's in. And man has caused, caused all of it. <laughs> the devil and man. <laughs> and God's trying to redeem and reconcile and and save souls. It's a, it's a battle between God and the devil. God will win in the end, but there's going to be a there's going to be a whole lot of rough situations before we leave this world. All right. Anybody else want to be anointed? Put I want to be anointed uh, in the comment section. I'm getting ready to pray. The book of James says to call for the elders of the church. Anoint with all sins will be forgiveness, uh, be forgiven. And sins, uh, sins will be forgiven and sicknesses will be healed. And we believe that God honors his word and he heals people. All right. I don't see any other comments, no other praise reports, no other prayer requests. Let's, uh, I'll anoint myself for, let's see, who was it for? For Pam's mother and Mr. Eddie. Let's all join together in corporate prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we obey your word. We've anointed with the oil that represents the Holy Ghost. We pray souls will be saved, sicknesses will be healed. Lives will be restored, uh, bodies will be restored to health. We pray for lowering of the blood pressure. We pray in Pam's mother and the healing of the body and mind and the spirit and soul of Brother brother Eddie. In the name of Jesus, we pray and be with all the families that their loved ones have passed away. Help them in the days and years to come. In the wonderful name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, amen. So... Beautiful, beautiful service tonight. I look forward. I believe I'm on here a lot during the week. Uh, but I really look forward to uh, Sunday night, the Hope in the Lord broadcast. I look forward to lifting Jesus up and preaching these series of sermons. All right. Now, uh, I only take offerings up or ask for offerings for our outreach or, or for us, my wife and I. Uh, many of you support us because uh, uh, the Lord is leading you to, and it helps us as we uh, serve the Lord here on social media, and God will bless you, and you know who you are. Uh, he already has blessed you. He's already blessed you before the blessing gets there. Have you ever thought of that? Je one preacher has his bank account. It's called JJ, Jehovah Jireh. 
the word Jehovah Jireh, which is the name of God, one of the names of God, is he sees and has already met the need before it comes. <laughs> so God's already got the blessing he has for all of us already on our way, even before the need even presents itself. So uh, there's three ways. Uh, some addresses, I'll give them to you. Put these addresses down and um, let me give them to you real quick. Like I said, now, if someone sends an offering in for $80, that's how much the rent is on our P.O. box. We'll keep the P.O. box open. we got a couple months left before that shuts down. So if you feel led of the Lord to uh, send $80, make sure you say this is for the P.O. box. If that doesn't come in, we're going to shut it down and just keep one address open. For right now, we've got two. Here it is. Pound sign 211 3740 Bowling Springs Highway, Bowling Springs, South Carolina, 29316. That's one of the addresses that you can send your offerings to my wife and I if you feel led or to the outreach or whatever you want to do. Uh, number two, the second address is 119 Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, Avenue, Inman, that's I-N-M-A-N, South Carolina, 29349. That's the two addresses we have right now. Um, and then, of course, some of you use Facebook Pay Secure Line. You go through Messenger, through your profile pic, scroll down to Facebook Pay. It's a secure line that comes straight to us. As soon as you send your offering, we get a notification, and you get a notification, and I send you a notification. So some of you use that already. So there you go. That's the three ways we're going to pray over the offering. And then we'll close out this service tonight, as we always do, by reading Psalms 91. Father, as we've already prayed today, bless the one who sent the offering in this morning. We pray favor and blessing in Luke 6.38 on that individual and their family and the extended family, the blessings and favors of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we pray for this offering tonight. You already know our needs here, and you know who's out there that can help us. And we know that you already know their needs, and you will bless them as they give to you like you bless me and others that give to you. We pray that you'll take the offerings that are sent in and we'll use them uh, wisely and honorably. And we pray uh, we pray special blessings uh, this Tuesday, Lord. I, uh, my wife reminded me that our pastor is going to give me some books and I can't wait to go. I love books and um, we appreciate uh, any book that's sent in here to be a blessing because I love to read. So in the name of Jesus, bless this offering now. We're going to play a little song for about, about, about a minute of a song for the offering. And that'll give people time to listen to the Holy Spirit. And we pray they obey the Lord like I did this morning. And like millions of other Christians did this morning. In Jesus' name. Okay, let me see if I can pull up a song here. This is going to be our song for the offering, okay? And uh, we're, we're not going to listen to a whole lot of it. This is our choir and this is our music. You definitely don't want to hear me singing. Somebody ought to say amen right there. So uh, let's listen to about a minute of this. This will give you time to listen to the Holy Ghost. Let's go to the next song here. Because it's real. <laughs> no. Sing it, Brother Jimmy. How I the day by day. <laughs> Nobody can sing it like him. <laughs> and I did not know for certain. <laughs> Come on. That my sins overwashed all the way. It sound good out there? I like this little mic right here. When the spirit How's he sound? Sound pretty good. Would try to tell Somebody me. type in there, does it sound good? Oh, I just would not believe 
And I never could be happy And to make myself Sing it with him if y'all know this song. Sing it with him when he gets to oh, sing. Oh, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Oh, I know. It's real. Praise God. <laughs> the doubts are settled. That's a good song to play over the offering, isn't it? I just had the Holy Ghost reminded me that now all of you, this is a blessing for me at my age. Um, I get to go to day shift instead of working all night. I'll be working days starting. I got one more shift, four nights on nights, and then I'll go back to days. And then that's number one. And uh, and then also, uh, I want you to be praying. The week that I go back to uh, day shift, I start my CDL training. It'll take, I think they say, five weeks to get it if I pass the test and all of that. Um, so let's put, remember me and my CDL training. That'll you know, to drive commercial trucks. So, uh, and that starts in two weeks. So, uh, if you can put that on your prayer list, if you can remember to pray for that, that I will pass the written part, the, uh, virtual training, the written part, and also we'll be leasing it. I think they said we we're going to lease us a car and all of that. And we drive back and forth to Charlotte and, uh, we'll be driving, and backing and doing all that stuff in Charlotte and going out. <laughs> so, uh, I appreciate it. Sister Pam there has a, a, um, a ministry in her home. She has a prayer wall. Uh, this computer was an answer to one of the prayers she, uh, had on her prayer wall. So praise the Lord. And so, um, this computer was not the most expensive, but we went with a top-of-the-line one and uh, so far in the mic system. So we praise the Lord for Pam out there praying for us. So get connected with her on Facebook and follow her, her little ministry on the Word, on the wall, <laughs> social media. And um, it's big, folks. It's big. God's wanting to do something big through our lives for His glory. And so we want to be in on it. We want to be where God's working. Amen. So Pam Strickland, get connected with her on her prayer ministry. Okay, everybody. It's been great tonight. Great to have a good spirit filled, filling the Lord. Um, I'm going to get me a bowl of ice cream, low carb. <laughs> this is really my only cheat day because the rest of the week I usually eat pretty good. Uh, and I've been losing some weight. Tomorrow I'll get, I don't walk on Sundays to rest my hips and knees and legs. But I will be walking Monday and Tuesday. And I walk usually double the amount. Why's that? Because we're swimming. Oh, I'm swimming tomorrow. So I'll, that's just as tough. And Pam said, I've marked off a lot of answered prayers lately. <laughs> well, there you go. It works, folks. I mean, you know. I mean, people look at people like us and they say well y'all not doing anything well I, we must be because you know the devil sure is battling us and god's answering prayer so we must be doing something for jesus so you just keep doing what god tells you to do and i'll keep doing what god tells me to do and we'll make a difference in this world and god's gonna bless what we do i like what one sister said in georgia 
uh, she sent me her testimony and also wrote uh, that God Almighty is quite capable of taking care of you. <laughs> and he is. He's big enough to take care of the universe. And so he knows what's going on. He's going to take care of us. So you keep praying, Pam. Y'all keep praying. Don't let the devil. The devil talk junk all. He talks junk all the time. We need to listen to the Lord like Judy Jacobs said. Quit listening to the devil and listen to God. Huh? That's Judy Jacobs. She's a Church of God evangelist. So, okay. So I'm shutting it down. Appreciate your time. Make sure you tag people in this broadcast. Make sure you share the broadcast with people. Um, you know, hit the share button. Hit the public button. That's the only way. Word of mouth on social media to get me out there. And send a little message. You know, like, listen to Brother Clay when you get time. And tell him the times that I'm on. Uh, now, tomorrow, I'll be on between 11 and 12. Um, on a word from the word broadcast, Brother Mark, I will uh, Habakkuk. Look this verse up tonight that Pam just quoted. Uh, Habakkuk. One preacher said, Tobacco. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Let's look at verse up tonight in closing. we got to read Psalms 91 too. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. Somebody ought to say amen. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. I need to do that here in my little office. That he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. We need to be waiting. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Amen, somebody. All right, let's look at Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place in the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the air that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither uh, shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, shall you trample under feet. Uh, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. It pays to love Jesus. That's what these verses are saying. <laughs> with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Jesus' name, we claim Psalms 91 and its promises over ourselves, our family, our friends, uh, our, the churches we go to, and also anyone who supports what we're trying to do, Lord, on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, folks. We'll see you all tomorrow if you're able to tune in. Tomorrow night, I'll do a broadcast. I'll be preaching. A, I don't even know what, what I'm preaching tomorrow night. My wife's shaking her head. Oh, it's Memorial Day, isn't it? We'll do one broadcast, and that'll be tomorrow night. All right, we'll do It's Memorial Day tomorrow. So we'll do one broadcast tomorrow at, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Huh? 11 o'clock, okay, uh, that was my technician doing hand and arm signals, I'll be on tomorrow at 11, so Memorial Day, we, uh, in America, we remember those who gave their lives for the cause of freedom, yes. and so tomorrow as we're enjoying the festivities, let us 
ponder within our hearts how grateful we are that people were willing to give their lives for our freedoms to enjoy. And for our broadcast here, we love the United States of America. We're pro-military. We back our military. We back our police, our legal system, our, our, our form of government. We believe in capitalism. And uh, I'm just letting you know where we're at. And we believe in America. And uh, so that's why we always end our program with God bless America. And we're pro-Jewish, pro-Israel. Um, we're their ally. God says he will bless those who bless Israel, curse them that don't. And my friend, I'm telling you, he means what he says. And he says what he means. And so, uh, so remember it's Memorial Day and whatever freedoms you have, even if you don't like what we believe in, they died for your freedom too, to be able to express that. Okay. So we live in a country where you're able to express whatever you want to say. Uh, it may have consequences, but you have a right to have freedom of speech because somebody died to protect that right gave their freedom of life uh, in several wars to defend freedom around the world. So we honor our military tonight and all of the fallen. And we say tonight here from, um, and we're thankful for social media. They don't charge me to, to come on here. If I went out and started a church, they would want rent. Come on, somebody. But Facebook don't charge me. Now, if I decide to use some of their advertising for our social media to get people to watch our broadcasts, of course, that's how they make money. But they don't charge me to do this. So I'm thankful for Facebook. Thankful for the opportunity to have a place to connect with people out there uh, for, uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and I'm also thankful for Instagram and YouTube. They don't charge me anything. And so I'm thankful. I don't have any hangups. Um, and so I'm thankful that God has given me a place where I can teach and preach the Bible. And um, I don't have no deacon board to try to tell me what to do and what to do. I do what I feel the Lord wants me to do. And uh, that's one of the blessings of doing this. <laughs> I have one preacher. He's got been in the ministry 58 years. He's got a worldwide ministry. I mean, he's got, I mean, millions of people following him on Facebook, but he tells them all the time. He has, I mean, he's got state of the art studio and all of that. And that's great. He tells them all the time. Anybody shows themselves on this broadcast, you block them. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so, you know, hey, that's the blessing of this type of social media outreaches and ministry. I mean, you know, hey. I was in it for 20 years, and I had to deal with all sorts of crazy mess. Shouldn't have never happened, but it did, and I fought my way through it. But, but I'm gonna tell you, uh, it, there's blessings to this right here. So God bless all of you tonight. God bless the United States of America. Uh, God bless the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. And even God bless. Pray for our enemies. Jesus said to pray for our enemies. We pray for them too. And we uh, that's what God told us to do. And so we'll see y'all tomorrow. And uh, we hope that you enjoyed the broadcast as much as I enjoyed being with y'all. Good night.